Hi, my name is Danica Kluth and I'm a grad student working with CSU Crops Testing. Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Bean Field Day. I'm out here in Lucerne, Colorado on Ed Croissant's field where he, we have the bean trial. We have invited Jerry Haynes from Jack's Bean Company out of Holyoke, Colorado to come talk about each of the varieties. Okay, here we are with the, this is the uh, virtual tour, I guess, of the 2020 Pinno Bean Plot at Lucerne, sponsored by the Colorado Dry Bean Board. Uh, we're going to take it just as we go across here with the first two varieties, are varieties that come from USDA ARS Prosser Washington. They are being considered uh, for release. They both have BCMV rust and they have have a pretty broad, uh, broad uh, uh, adaption uh, and perform, perform well, they say, under stress, including low, low uh, soil fertility and drought. As you can see, they are pretty upright. They pod fairly high. In this plot, they're probably some of the longer season beans, um, but they say they are uh, only a day or two later um, than their other varieties. To me, they're probably uh, definitely some of the longer season ones in here. We're going to go to their cousins basically. The one on my left is one called PT 11131 and they are um, again advanced lines. Uh, they are not uh, slow darkening. They don't have that uh, uh, gene but they are resistant to BCMV rust and again they are good for low soil uh, fertility and drought tolerant. Um, they do have a semi-upright growth. Uh, again, they are just a, a, a little bit longer. I see some green pods there. Probably just a hair longer uh, than some of the other varieties we're going to get to here in just a second. Um, but they uh, good yield potential in there. They look, look pretty nice. Palomino, it's a North Dakota variety. They use them a lot up there. They really like them. Um, they are slow darks. They, uh, uh, they've got resistance to BCMV, uh, but they are susceptible. And I've seen this in our plots here in previous years, uh, really susceptible to rust. Uh, in Thracnos, we don't have a lot of problem with that, but, but they definitely do seem to go down with rust. The next one is uh, another North Dakota variety called Falcon and uh, Falcon is uh, it's a short vine variety um, they say they are it's 105 day I don't think it's that long uh, looking at some of the ones in here uh, it's um, resistant to the new rust uh, uh, it's also resistant to soybean uh, cyst nematode don't know we have a lot of that problem at least up here uh, this is the first year in the trials, so there's not a lot of two-year data, but you'll be referring to that as you see this. I'm sure you'll have a sheet in front of you, and you can look at some of that data, the two-year data. The next variety is a variety called GTS 904. 904 has been around for a while. Uh, they really like it down in the sand. Uh, yields well, covers the ground covers the ground well. Uh, it, uh, it really seems to kick the beans out. It's a, it's a definitely a, a semi-determinate. It's a tall plant, uh, but it will vine for a while. They say it's similar to, uh, and suitable for direct harvest. Now, it probably is, but I think most of the varieties in here at one time or another will be direct harvested because of the advent of the equipment. The guys with the uh, with the steel-toed shoes and eye protection seem to be going, getting faster than the guys with the uh, genetics as far as plant architecture. The next one is a variety that I like. Uh, we use it an awful lot. Uh, Jack Bean does. It's Windbreaker. Uh, Windbreaker's got a. It may never ever be the uh, the bin buster of some of those varieties, but year in year out, it's a solid. Uh, uh, maybe never a grand slam, but a solid double and a singles hitter. It's always there, and I like it. It's got good seed size, good uh, seed color. 
Uh, you can market them anywhere. Um, so we use a lot of windbreaker. Uh, Jack's Bean Company does. The next one is a, a new release. Um, and uh, it's, it was, um, it's called SV6139GR. Um, Treasure Valley Trinidad. I got had some of this seed and we've had them harvested already. Uh, done very, very well. Um, they potted for us um, out east. They potted a little bit higher than what these are potting uh, and yielded very well. We, those, um, those made about 3,700 pounds. So we were really happy with them the first year out of the, out of the uh, starting blocks. Now we're in DR Wood. And DR Wood, Mark released this one. That's a 2018 variety. Um, they say it's 97 to 100. Again, I think, I don't think we're quite that long here. I don't know the planting date on this field, but uh, there are longer season varieties. I don't think the way they're acting out east this year, they are that long either. Um, that day length of uh, season would scare me a little bit in the sand because I want that ground covered through the winter. And so I lean more towards the 95 days along the season. And these seem to fit that more uh, out there as far as the 95 day. Uh, I would plant them on sandy ground. And I'd be happy with them. And uh, Long's Peaks, another one of Mark's releases. Um, 2011, he released this variety. Uh, it's um, resistant to uh, most of the prevalent rust strains that we have, BCMV. Uh, it's an upright plant and uh, it's uh, been yielding um, in the uh, upper percentile uh, in all the, the last two years plots. Again, you'll see that on the paperwork that you get or have in your hand. Um, its seed size is 1198, which um, some of those, they say uh, that might be a little, little uh, larger seed size than what the, uh, the DR woods were. Uh, this year seems to me with that heat that we had two weeks ago, all of the beans are a little smaller seeded. But uh, that remains to be seen as we get a little longer into the harvest here, I guess. The variety here is a variety called Centennial. Again, it's a 2015 release of Marks. Um, bean Camose, uh, rust resistant, excellent seed quality. It's pretty much uh, upright. Uh, uh, we seem to have it pod a little higher out east this year too than what it's potted, potting here in the flood situation. But uh, they're up off the ground and um, we could definitely get a swath underneath them or a, or a direct harvest. Uh, we could harvest this variety out there, direct harvest, I think. This is the other um, sister to the 39. Uh, we just saw a little bit ago of, of um, Treasure Valleys. Um, this is one called Rough Rider. Um, we've also had this one um, in some fields and we really like the way it yielded this year. Um, got good bright seed color, uh, good white background. Um, it looks like it's going to be a, a, a hit for us out there. Probably in narrow rows even. Um, we think we're going to really like this variety. Uh, good pod placement. Like I said, semi-determinate. Semi it does have a short vine, but uh, it's a good variety. Now here, this is Cowboy. Cowboy's a little quicker, so it shows at a disadvantage here. Uh, let's see, they're gonna call it a, uh, they don't have a seed size on here, but uh, this variety, I really like it. Um, we've used it in sprinkler irrigation, and it looks better and it's more impressive to me uh, uh, and maybe that's because it's in a here we're in a little different situation. Uh, it's went down early. I don't look at it being that early to me in the uh, uh, the plots that I've seen out east. But it's uh, it's a good looking variety out there. I like the uh, the plant habit, the plant architecture, and uh, we've got it in some um, 15 inch rows out there, and I think it's going to yield yield and yield pretty well. Slow darkening variety, Radiant, uh, from Provida, ADM West. Uh, it's a good variety. Uh, 
friend of dad's had it out and I know they've been using it for a while and they seem to like it pretty well. Um, good seed size, uh, nice plant architecture, it's a good one. Now we're in Monterey and Monterey's been, they've been using it down in the sand, uh, works pretty good, covers the ground pretty quickly. It's got a long vine. Uh, it uh, probably a little a hair longer season than some of the guys uh, uh, may like down in the sand, but uh, uh, good seed size, uh, resistant uh, yield. Yields have been good. It's an, yielding 115 percent of average in the two years that it's been in here. So they like the yield. Just got to make sure that when you're using the sand that you get it off in time to get that ground covered. Stickler on that. Okay. Okay, this variety here is Torreon. It's an ADM Seed West variety, Providas. Uh, medium maturity, which, yeah, I'll go with that. Um, it's a BCMV resistant, resistant to rust. 98% um, of the two year, um, two year trial average, 98% yielder. 11.95 seats per pound, which is about average. The, the, a lot of Torreon's been planted in the Imperial area, and they seem to like it pretty well out there. This is Vibrant. We had uh, Vibrant, it's a slow dark, and we had it uh, uh, year before last for the first time down around Yuma, and that stuff um, yielded 3,500 pounds. It's uh, really, it really kicks the, uh, kicks the beans out. Uh, pretty beans, uh, good seed size, and uh, uh, we we actually had awfully good yields. Here, since ninety eight percent of the yield average, I, I find it to be a little better than that out on the out east. Okay, this is La Paz, and you know it's um, it's an upright. Um, a lot of people have pushed it for the uh, for the fact that it is a direct harvest variety, and um, I guess that's uh, that's definitely suited for that. I find it to be um, a little bit uh, smaller seeded, and I also find it to be not quite the seed quality of um, of a lot of the varieties that are out here. That definitely will direct harvest well. Okay, these two varieties here, they're from. Um, Ameriseed, and they're called Gleam and Lumen. So I assume, but that's all the information we have. I assume that, with that being said, they are probably slow darkening varieties. Uh, it does look like they pod uh, up off the ground fairly well. Uh, it does look like um, they are probably uh, at least in the same maturity as most of the uh, the longer beans that are in this plot. I'll be pushing that 9,800 day uh, range, but other than that, we don't know a lot about them. At least I don't know a lot about them. Yeah, my name is uh, Carlos Urrea. I, the, I am the dry edible bean breeder uh, with the University of Nebraska. Uh, first of all, I would like to give some uh, thanks to Sally. John's Diamond and also Ray, uh, Jerry Johnson for giving me the, giving me the opportunity to test my uh, experimental lines. I do have a, you know, briefly, I mean, in case of my bean ring program, I'm developing beans with high yield potential, resistant to multiple diseases like viral diseases, fungal diseases, and also bacterial diseases. With earliness, I mean, beans need to be ready to be harvested by September 15th or September to the 20th, 20th uh, because of the early frost. Uh, we apply plant architecture because the bean industry is mo moving towards the red harvest and also seed quality. Uh, we have one of the best seed quality in the United States. We spot a lot of beans. Uh, right here in this variety trial, I mean, this is a really nice variety trial, a replicated trial. 
I do have four of my experimental lines with the potential to be uh, released as a cultivar. Uh, all four lines, there are slow darkening pinto lines. I think the uh, bean industry is moving to, I mean, in these directions because the, the beans are going to have a longer uh, life on the shelf. Uh, right now, uh, right here, uh, this is a, the first experimental line. Uh, this is called any any two seventeen thirty seven. And on the other side, we have uh, this is any four seventeen that's, that's six. And these two lines, uh, right now, I do have a uh, five slots of one pound of each in Kimball Experimental Station. I mean, I am increasing the, the breed of seeds. Uh, the last line over here is... Uh, uh, 17, 18. And that particular line, I have one acre. This is, a, this is my, uh, my, my current release. Uh, besides the uh, slow darkening traits, this being that they have a uh, being uh, common rose resistant genes, like UR11, UR3, UR6 combinations. They do have uh, also common material by uh, resistance. There is no immunity, but it has the resistance and also has the being common mosaic virus uh, resistant genes. Uh, they have been performing uh, really well across uh, different locations, not only in Nebraska, but also across the United States. And I do have, a, you know, some, for example, in case of the NA2 1718, uh, until 2018, has been tested in assisting different experiments. Nine in Nebraska and seven across the United States, and the average yield is around uh, 3,054 pounds per acre. And also, they have a really a larger seed, it's about like 1,010 seeds per pound. Uh, in case of the other, uh, the other three lines, I mean, it has been tested in less location, but they have larger, uh, besides all the trades that I mentioned before, uh, they have a, a larger, larger seeds. I mean, range, ranging from like 1,000 to 1,100 seeds per pound. Thank you again uh, for giving, uh, giving me the opportunity to test this sign here with this, in this trial. Okay, this is uh, the variety called Stay Bright, Slow Darkening, um, uh, Trinidad and uh, Larry Landing, uh, Northern Bean have this on this one together. Um, and uh, it's a good yielder, got uh, good architecture, um, it's a little fuller season, but we're sitting right next to a variety that's the quickest variety in here too, so it makes it look like it's a little longer season. Plenty of foliage there to get in the combine, cushion it. Um, it's a good variety, no doubt about it. And here's a little variety that we use an awful lot, uh, Jack. It's called Island. It looks like not so good in here. I, I cleaned that up a lot. Uh, it's melted down, but this variety is so short that if you lose an early crop of beans, or you're going to go after wheat, uh, harvest, uh, maybe you're taking a feed crop off. Uh, these are probably an 85, 86 day bean uh, and they work. Uh, they got good seed size, good color. I've seen them make uh, over 3,000 pounds planted the end of June. Um, they work and they work well. So if you talk about um, rescue varieties, they've got the, uh, uh, when you talk about Othello and some of the shorter season ones, this variety right here has got the rust gene in it and it just seems to uh, to work and ver work very dang well. I We use this thing an awful lot um, and we plant it later and uh, spread the harvest out a little bit and you're going to like it.